goodness, look at that. You, you somehow got up here ahead of me again, didn't you? I don't know how you keep doing that. Welcome to the Mask Fan Attic once again. The spooky old attic above Horror Hotel where we look for cool monster masks for all you Halloween enthusiasts, all you Halloweenatics. Yeah, I'm still working on that one. Um, let me tell you, uh, kids, uh, if, if you're online, uh, don't ever click on an offer for a club membership because then every month they'll send, well, never mind. We're here to look for masks and I, I believe I see one right now that is of interest. Yes, indeed, an interesting mask right there. Look at this, an old, old mask right here, folks. This is an old Don Post Studios Cyclops. And aren't you glad you have me to tell you it's a Cyclops because you probably would have never dreamed that was the name of it uh, without me to inform you. Anyway, this particular Cyclops based on the 1958 movie The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad in which the Cyclops was one of several monsters uh, brought to life through the brilliant stop-motion animation techniques of the legendary Ray Harryhausen. Now, um, if you're a Ray Harryhausen fan, and how can you not be a Ray Harryhausen fan, really, if you're a fan of uh, screen fantasy in any form, uh, you should love that they made a mask of one of his great monsters, the classic Cyclops. Now, this came out from Don Post Studios in, I believe, 1976. It was in production for several years. And the first edition, which came out in 76, uh, had light brown blondish hair all down the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it's that sort of, um, that hair that looks a little uh, silky and shiny uh, in the light. Uh, it's the same kind of hair that the, um, the uh, Captain Kirk masks commonly had. And it's got a full head of hair in the back and then a little bit, I don't know if you can see those, a few little loose hairs punched in around the brow and around his horn. Now, uh, in the movie, the Cyclops had no hair at all, so really it's a little more accurate for it to be hairless. Um, unless this is maybe the brother or a friend or a neighbor of the Cyclops in the movie and this one has hair. You know, who says it's the exact same guy, right? But uh, in any case, uh, I've heard this mask accused of not being quite cinematically accurate enough over the years because it isn't quite as muzzly, meaning uh, when you look at it in profile, the lower part of the face doesn't stick out quite as uh, dramatically as the one in the movie. But uh, in all fairness to the folks at Don Post, come on, that's a very small concession to make to human anatomy to uh, make it slightly more head-shaped to uh, go from uh, a stop-motion animation puppet, which really can look like anything and still be animated, to something that could be worn on a human head. Uh, as a, a wearable mask that people can see and breathe out of. Now it's got little slits around the eyes, on uh, about three cut on either side of the eye that uh, the wearer would see out of. And this was re-released in uh, 1986 in a secondary edition that was bald and was a little more pink than this one. And uh, not as good at castings, honestly, as the, uh, as the early ones. Uh, the 70s Cyclopses, Cyclo Cyclopses, Cyclopi, whatever that word would be. Uh, the, the 70s uh, version of this particular mask uh, were cast in black latex and stipple painted with the flesh tone. The 1986 release and the even later 2000 release in the retro series were uh, simply flesh colored latex and uh, not quite as thick, didn't hold up as well, and uh, they're still cool, but um, you know, this is one of the masks that I, I always wish uh, Don Post Studios would come out with a really s deluxe, you know, uh, high-end collector version of like the, they did the uh, calendar uh, monsters in 98-99 um, uh, and I'm assuming you know what I mean by calendar monsters if not um, go watch some more of these segments and uh, it will get explained I'm not gonna explain the whole thing right now no people be dying of old age they probably are already uh, but this particular mask I hold in my hand the actual mask that I have owned since childhood for real and I am old I am so old, you know, um, when, when people ask that famous question, when people say that question to me, when they say, uh, uh, do you, can you remember what you were doing when the president was assassinated? They're talking about Lincoln, okay? That's how old. But I have had this baby since the 1970s, and 
uh, back at my haunted house when I was a kid and still in school and had a haunted house. At Halloween, a classmate of mine named Matt Baldy wore this actual Cyclops mask, which I hold in my hand a million years later. Um, and, and he was a big, big guy, big kid, so he looked good as a, as a Cyclops. He, he had uh, like a big canvas uh, tunic and a rope around his waist and, this, and it was awesome. But anyway, long time ago, I'm thinking maybe 1978? seven or eight, uh, Matt Baldy wore this, and I don't know what became of uh, my old schoolmate Matt Baldy. I don't know what happened to him since then. I haven't seen him since graduation. Probably he was never the same because of his exposure to Don Post Cyclops masks. But that's your, uh, that's your find for this week here at the Mask Fan Attic. And until next time, watch your step because it is extremely dangerous up here.